This review has been made possible by Chevrolet of Naperville. As you know, Chevy has tons of brand new cars and trucks available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to ChevroletofNaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2021 Chevy Tahoe. Up front is a 5.3 liter V8 and down below is a 10 speed automatic transmission. Now, this is the freshly redesigned Chevy Tahoe. This is the first year for this body style 2021. I'll show some video of the previous generation versus this generation. I think this generation looks a lot more modern. I really feel like this Tahoe took a solid step into the 2020s as where the last one was a good looking 20 teens car. But we have a lot to go through, this being a completely new body style. First and foremost are the dimensions. This Tahoe is large, and not only is it large, a lot larger than its outgoing generation. As opposed to the 2020 Tahoe, the 2021 is 4.9 inches longer of a wheelbase, 6.7 inches longer in total. The second row gets three more inches. The third row gets 10 more inches and the cargo behind the third row gets 10.2 more inches. That's a lot of car and you definitely feel it. I feel like I am truly genuinely driving an apartment. I am very high up, I'm very long, I'm very wide. And the Tahoe is too. No, but for real, it feels very, very large. You have a very big road presence. This is the largest Tahoe they've ever made. They just keep getting bigger. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Well, I guess we'll find out. Let's get back to that 5.3 liter V8. They've been using this forever and ever and ever, at least since the early 2000s. I even drove a Volvo 240 with this exact engine swapped into it. Of course, there have been minor changes in the last 20 years, but overall, it's made about the same amount of horsepower ever since day one. So I'll put that up on the screen of what the 2021 Tahoe makes in terms of power, as well as I'll put a fuel economy. I know it's not going to be great, so there's not a whole big use to it, but that's your fuel economy. Don't expect big numbers out of this thing. I mean, you're moving half of Joliet's housing situation, so I guess fuel economy can't be great. We're out here on the test track. We are fully warmed up. I don't really see any type of sport mode or, or anything like that. So we'll just, uh, I'll put the window down just because, but. Not bad, not bad. The transmission did sort of hesitate for a split second, but it's a Tahoe, what can you expect? Speaking of that transmission, 10 speed automatic. Now this was normally in the last generation, this was reserved for the higher trim levels got the 10 speed, the lower trims got the six speed. Well, this is actually the lowest trim of the Tahoe and so it still gets the 10 speed. They've moved that up. Now everything gets the 10 speed and I really, really like that. Last but not least, of course, this particular Tahoe is four wheel drive. However, you can still order and you can still find Tahoes in two wheel drive. I personally would go with the four wheel, but that's just me. So let's talk about the interior. We have a bunch of things to go through in here because of the redesign. So in front of me, I have a bunch of gauges. This is unchanged from the last generation. The last generation looked pretty much the exact same. That being said, on the far left, I have my tachometer. In the center, I have my oil pressure, coolant temperature, fuel, and battery voltage. Then on the right, I have my speedometer. At the bottom in the center, I do have a little display giving me some information, my miles per hour and digits. You know, I could switch through it here. My audio, my navigation, turn by turn, my phone options, my settings, units, info. You know, I can scroll through a lot of different things and I'll show it here. Chevy has always been really, really good about giving the driver the most information that they can. Chevy historically has had some of the best sensors. For me personally, I have a 1985 Mazda RX-7 that I 13B swapped and it's on its own custom computer. I use GM sensors. They, they're just good. They're good stuff. And so through those good sensors, you get a lot of good information. So. That's what I find, I, like, I even have air filter life, you know, stuff like that. It, it, it's really, really solid. GMs are always good about giving you information. However, 
If you do select a higher trim level of the Tahoe, there is an available eight inch display, but if that's something that you need, you're gonna have to start paying a little bit more for the Tahoe. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my cruise control options, heated steering wheel and pre-collision warning. And on the right, I have my voice commands, phone options, and my scroll wheel for that center screen and the gauges that we just talked about. To the left of me, I have a bunch of buttons. Not only my power parking brake, but I do have my lane keep assist on and off, traction control on and off, parking sensors on and off, automatic start stop on and off, and my outlet on and off. We'll talk about that later on when we talk about the back. Then down below that, I have my four wheel drive options, four high, four low, auto, or two high, and my dimmer switches, as well as my trailer brake sensitivity. Really, really like that. On the door, I just have my power windows, power locks, and power mirrors. Nothing really too crazy. And then we move into the center. This is where you're really gonna start noticing that this is a newer generation of Tahoe. First of all, this is a brand new 10 inch display. I absolutely love it. It's so, so clear. It really, really feels like any other electronic that you have in your pocket, and that's huge to me. As this vehicle is stickered at $66,000, I don't want cheap electronics in here, and so it feels solid, it's very responsive, very clear. Of course, I have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and I can do that wirelessly. So I can do wireless Apple CarPlay if that's something I so choose. I can also, through a paid package, get a Wi-Fi hotspot, and we have a bunch of different settings we can go to Nothing really too crazy in here. I think it's funny that it says climate and air quality. And when I click on air quality, it's just fan speed and heated seats. Not really sure about that, but hey, whatever. All right, so by far my favorite feature of this center display screen, you come over here and you see camera. There are nine cameras positioned around the Tahoe. And so we get this really nice bird's eye view. We can also change it between a couple different things. Right now we're looking at the front See the lawnmower guy, lawnmower guy, lawnmower guy. Oh, we can watch him go. Right up, oh, there he is. There he is. There's a the lawnmower guy. <laughs> I mean, we can look at like just the back top down, um, the front top down, and that is where my tires will go because the wheel is turned. I can take a look. These are looking out the mirrors. This is a big shadow. I'm, it's really harsh lighting right now, but those are views from the mirrors. I can look straight down at my hitch. That's really, really cool. And a bunch of different trailer things as well. This is amazing and really one of the big features and big reasons why I would get the 2021 over the 2020. I have teen driver mode and valet mode. So valet mode, of course, you can set a speed limit. Um, and, and teen driving mode is actually similar as well. You can restrict the radio volume. And through the My Chevy app, you can actually watch everywhere your car goes. If you have a teen driver, it'll tell you if they're accelerating hard, braking hard, cornering too fast, things like that. Down below that center screen, we do have two very nice climate control vents. Nice little stitched leather here on the dash, which is nice because this is an LT. Like I said, this is the bottom of the barrel. And so it still gets the nice stitched leather. I really like that. To the right of that, I have a very odd cubby hole for storage. Now. Chevy's always been weird about their storage. For instance, a lot of their glove boxes are openable only by a button on the center console and not actually the handle itself. Or a lot of the mid-2010 Chevys have a radio that will actually go up and there's a storage bin behind the radio. This is just a, an oddly long cubby hole that I can't even reach my whole hand into, which is uh, interesting to say the least. Then to the left of all that is my new shifter. This is new for 2021. And it's just a bunch of buttons, park, reverse, neutral, drive, and low. I don't mind it. In terms of button shifters, this is probably one of the better ones. You actually pull up for reverse and drive, push in for neutral, push in for park. Sort of gives you the opportunity to not mess up, which I really, really like. Down below those two vents, I do have my radio options, power, volume, home, skip track, back, things like that. I like how you don't have to 100% use the touchscreen. However, most of it is still run through the touchscreen. Then I do have my tactile air conditioning and heating controls. I love this. I love that Chevy puts the actual temperature on the dial itself. I think it looks very classy and when it's off. You can't even see that there would be a number there. I think it looks great. I could turn on and off my rear climate. I do have heated seats and I can select if I want just my back or my back and my bottom, which is nice. 
Down on the center tray, I have two USB ins. One is USB-C, another is traditional USB. Then I have a 12 volt outlet and a wireless charging pad, which is very, very nice. Then I have two cup holders and the center console, which I always say is so flipping deep that if this car lives long enough, it might eventually one day become haunted. Now the seats are leather stitched. They're not the most comfortable in the world. The first thing I noticed when I got in was they're a little bit hard and I'm still noticing it now. They're very, very rigid seats. There's no fluffing about. So take that as you will. So far, I've been driving this car for about an hour. I haven't really noticed it after the main fact of getting in, but maybe that's something you might have to worry about. However, this Tahoe has two more rows. So let's do some backseat reviews. All right, so we're in the back of the 2021 Chevy Tahoe. A couple things to note back here. First of all, I do have two captain's chairs with their own armrests. I have tons and tons of leg room. My knees have no prayer of hitting the front seat. I can even sort of slouch down like this and I'm still comfortable. I really, really like that. The, the, the size of the vehicle is really, really noticeable back here. I really like that. I do have my own climate controls down here, two USB-C. These are heated captain's chairs. And I have a wall outlet. So we talked about that up front with that button for the outlet. I can toggle on and off. I guess if you want to punish your kids, you can turn their Xbox off or whatever they have plugged in these days. I don't even know. But you can toggle that on and off. I do get a regular standard American wall outlet. I love that. I absolutely love that. I do get to enjoy the sunroof as well. We'll talk about that when we jump back up front as well. And I do have a third row. So I'm going to hop back there. So now I'm in the third row of the 2021 Tahoe and space back here isn't great. However, I'll cut to a clip of my 2020 review and you could see that I'm a lot more comfortable. All right, so obviously third row, not nearly as spacious as the second row. If you have kids, this is fine for them. It's just me, a 22 year old adult who has a knee that locks up not the key demographic for this rear seat. I mean, yeah, okay, my knee is in the aisle, but I, I feel a lot better back here. This is a massive, massive improvement over the 2020. I do have a USB-C charger on the wall. I have a cup holder over here, cup holder over there, as well as another charger on that wall, which is very, very nice. I have vents up here I can kind of mess with. Overall, this is dramatically different. If you use the third row a lot, but don't want a Suburban for some reason. Go with the 2021 versus the 2020. This is dramatically, dramatically better. So now around the very back of the 2021 Tahoe. I apologize, it's pretty windy today. I'll try to stand on my back to the wind maybe. So, couple buttons on here. First of all, power tailgate. I mean, look at that, beautiful. So we'll take a look in here. I can power fold the rear seats. One. Two. Look at that. Now, obviously there's some things um, stopping it from going all the way down, but all of this will fold flat. And these can actually be brought back up with power. So I'm hitting the button here, bada bing, bada boom. Not tons of room back here, but definitely a lot more than the 2020 Tahoe. I mean, in terms of space, this is my forearm. You know, you get a full arm's length into the trunk. So you can actually carry things back here, which is very, very nice and important. But we'll come back out here, power tailgate again. But, I do have a glass button. So that'll actually just open up just the glass. So what's good about this is this would be a great filming car. Oh, that's interesting. The wiper actually stays put. That's funny. But if you wanna load things or if you have an animal in back here, you don't want to jump out or whatever, you can do that, but you do have to close that manually. All right, so before we talk about the looks, I do wanna hop back up front here and talk about a couple things that are really, really cool. First of all, big sunroof. This is huge for the new Tahoe, is that I get a very, very large sunroof that spans almost all the way to the second row of seats. I absolutely love that. You guys know I love my sunroofs, and I can tilt this as well, so I can actually get some added ventilation, and 
can slide this front portion. So I'd say it's a good foot and a half. I mean, you really get a really good size here. And I like the fact that slide and tilt are two different switches. So then there's the, the one that's like, you know, it does it all, but then I don't know if it's tilted. I don't know if it's fully closed, but if you go too far on closing it, then it tilts it. And if you go too far on tilting it, it it's two switches is just better. It's just better. Going off of up here though, so I'm actually putting down the rear seats from a button up here. That's super nice and that's new for the 2021 is that I can electronically put down the seats just from sitting right here. How great is that? That's super great. That's super great, you know it. Now we have to talk about the looks. This is really the big change for the Tahoe in terms of 2020 versus 2021. They revised the looks and I have to say, I really, really love it. It really looks like something out of the 2020s, which is good. This, it's a 2021, it, it should look like something from this decade. You know, the Tahoe has always been a staple in automotive culture. If you want a big American SUV, you pretty much go with the Tahoe. The Explorer isn't that big and they got rid of the Expedition, which might be coming back, but whatever. And Dodge has the Durango, but they're not as popular. This has been a staple for the last 20 years. It really has. If you want a big American SUV, you go with a Tahoe. And so I like the fact that they're keeping it fresh. It looks good. It looks modern. And if I'm going to pay the money, I want it to look modern. I want it to be modern. And so let's talk about that. My final closing thoughts on the 2021 Tahoe is would I take it over a 2020? And my gut reaction is yes. Here's why. I like the modern feel of it. I like the infotainment system. It has nicer features. I honestly like the bigger size. A vehicle like this, the more size, the better. Overall, I really like the amenities. I like the look, I like the feel. And if I'm gonna spend the money, if I'm going to spend that much money, I want it to be new. I want to go over and show my friends and pull up and have them say, ooh, that's good. That's good looking, that's new, that's hot, that's fresh. I don't want to pull up to my friend's house to pick them up to go to Door County, Wisconsin to have a great weekend in my Tahoe and I get in and they're like, did you get a good deal on it? I want them to be blown away. This blows people away and it will for the next couple of years until they redesign it again. So for right now, I would take a 2021 over a 2020. Now, of course, you're gonna have to factor in if you could get a 2020 for an absolute deal, I would because this is $66,000. And at this point in my life, $45,000 is a lot more appealing than 66. What I'm saying is I love the new Tahoe. I think the redesign went really, really well. And hopefully one of these days I'll be able to get my hands on a high country. This car is actually missing a lot of the new tech that they now offer in the Tahoe. For instance, radar cruise control. For instance, air leveling suspension. For instance, the eight inch screen in the gauges. You know, this is the more bottom of the barrel, but I wanted to drive one of these first, not only to get this video out to you as soon as possible, but also because this is what most people buy. The high country's nice, but I'm not sure everyone can afford one. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge, huge, huge thank you to Chevrolet of Naperville. Their information is up on the screen as well as linked in the description below for helping me get into a 2021 Tahoe. You guys have been asking for it. I'm happy I can finally deliver. And I think things are looking up for the Tahoe. I think this is another solid installation of the Tahoe name. I really, truly love it. So go check out Chevy of Naperville. They have a couple of these on the lot so far. Not so many yet. So you might want to get in and get your hands on one ASAP. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really like it. Take care, guys.